What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 156 of Nintendo Noise, Slipscreen Games' weekly Nintendo podcast. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined today by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Hello, Stephen. It's good to be back. It is indeed good to be back. Uh, I already gave this spiel on the Flipscreen Games podcast, but in case you don't listen to that show... Um, I, I want to just apologize for the my absence, and there was a little bit of a inconsistency on uploads for a week or two there. I think Nintendo Noise was safe, right? This I mean, is the one show that went up. It might have been fine, actually, so I might be apologizing for nothing. But either way, I moved, and my computer blew up in the same week. So it's been a cra- – and Max went on vacation. So it's been, it's been a really yeah. crazy uh, couple couple weeks here at Flip Screen Headquarters. Uh, but we are, we are uh, very, very – very close to being fully resettled in our new spaces and back on track on everything. So if you notice me uh, on YouTube in a weird crop, uh, I'm in my living room. I'm on a couch. I am on a laptop. I don't think that's true. As you can see by the walls, Pete's actually just over I'm there. I'm on the other side of the room. It's Steve's he's house. Like, <laughs> he's just there. Hey! Hi. It's great. <laughs> Anyway, so I just, you know, a bunch of you reached out and, and uh, said some really nice stuff or, or were asking where things were. And so I just wanted to give a quick PSA. Uh, we're, we're pretty much back on track here. I got my new PC in the process of being fixed and everything. So thank you guys for your patience and your support and all the kind words and everything. We, you know, we really appreciate you and, uh, and all the support and all, all that you do. So uh, just, just wanted to kick things off there. And now let's get, just leave that in the real view because we got a cool episode ahead of us. All right. Nintendo Switch 2 Lee. It's happening again. I know. I, I think there's two types of listeners of this show. Either you're really excited every time this happens, or you're like, Jesus Christ, I want this to come out already. I hope you're on the other side of that fence today because these are some good leaks. These are some juicy leaks, right? We got some images. We got some mock ups that may or may not be real. We've got some specs. We've got some details about the case, about some of these quality of life changes. Uh, many of which seem to, you know, corroborate or follow up on some of the rumors that we've heard recently. So this feels like one where there's quite a bit of smoke and I think probably quite a bit of fire. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of fire here, I think. I mean, we've seen not only the case, but also the main board. There's a leak of what components potentially are in there. So we've got some more information on that. Um it's a, it's a big old leak. These originated on uh, a Chinese website, right? Yeah, and so someone... they, they broke on the, uh, you know, the west uh, western side of the, the world over on Reddit, but the, the kind of original source seems to all point back to this Chinese message board. Um, I believe it was Fama boards, but I don't know if that's, I forget if that's one of the Chinese ones, or if that's an American one that was resharing it. I'm, I'm not super dialed into all of the those boards, right? Um, but uh, that that's where the, the story has originated, and then there's been a bit of extra reporting from uh, Andy Robinson over at VGC where he's kind of, you know, gone through to corrobor- corroborate some of these things with some of their sources, or to talk with people who have leaked things in the past and try to see where the truth lies, and I mean, based on everything that's come out, right, like obviously between now and when this publishes, there's always more information that could come out. You always want to take these kind of rumors with a grain of salt. Um, but a lot of what we're seeing seems to line up with other reporting. Like in Andy's article on the subject, he said, while the images are unverified, one source who has not seen the final quote unquote Switch 2 console, but has been briefed on Nintendo's plans, told VGC that the Reddit images match what the company has told partners to expect from its design. So, you know, again, you want to take stuff like this with a grain of salt, but um, Andy coming out and and offering that information to me feels like him saying that you know there seems there seems to be something here yeah this would be a, a really weird thing to fake unlike that fake we got when it was the nx and it was like a 3d printed thing that was just a, like a car mirror with like nubs on it this is a full main board we've got components that we can see on there we've got uh, images of the the cases for the Joy-Con and the back case of the the s- seemingly Switch Two, um, and also a whole list of of what's in there. So it's it's a big thing to potentially fake, 
not saying someone couldn't you could have 3d printed all these parts you could have decided to just go about and do this to, to fool the internet but yeah there's also just... like i think the the thing worth calling out that the fact that this lines up with a bunch of um other reports that we've gotten could either be because it's real or because somebody follows those reports very closely yeah. and then use them to mock up something that matches those reports right so yeah Take it with a grain of salt. You know, I think the other thing worth adding here is that there is a mixture of images, right? Like, there's the the shot that you're talking about that very much looks to be a shot of the, the board, right? And then there are also um, these kind of, like, 3D renderings of other pieces of it. And, you know, there there has been kind of some debate on whether those 3D renderings are real, are they, like, internal things that have leaked, are they, you know, the original leaker... Uh, allegedly has an interest in 3D modeling. So is that somebody who's seen the device or has access to... That's my guess, is that that someone's got a hold of what we've seen, the, the back case and the, the Joy-Cons, and has then 3D mocked it up to include... Um, everything because to your point the actual photo of the board itself and like there's like a joy con shell like that is not a model that's a photo right so faking it's that a photo, but there's you could have faked it you could have 3d printed it you could sure, have printed your custom sure. circuit board my point is but, faking that is a lot more work than yes mocking something up so i think that there's a, been a lot of conversation on that seems to probably be real and you take the mock the, the models with a grain of salt. But again, they do match up to stuff that we've heard in the past, right? Like there's, and we'll, you know, we'll get into the specifics in a minute, but there's like that button that looks like it connects to the magnetic feature that we've talked about. Um, the screen size seems to be, so there, there's a lot here that does seem to match up to what we've been expecting. Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot here and, and pretty much everything we've expected. But again, it could be the, someone's been reading and listening right. to the the reporting and going oh that's what's going to be on there i'll fake it to do that i personally don't think this is fake i think the board the case the joy cons are real i it, think the cab designs have been mocked up by someone else it feels too specific yeah you know it feel it feels too specific to be fake i think and um, it's coming out of china this is where it's presumably being manufactured it's likely that they would have got hold of these parts there. Yeah, allegedly the leaker is somebody who works in a factory where the work is being yeah. done. Like Not that someone was someone whose uncle works at Nintendo. Right, exactly. Uh, it's so you know it is one of those like through the grapevine kind of things. Like you need, you need to take take every kind of rumor like this with a grain of salt. But um, I did think it was interesting. Like there there was a forum uh, post that um, I wanted to shout out Wakahula, one of our Patreon producers. He was the one who shared it in the leaks and rumors um, chat on our Discord. And if you're not on our Discord, come join. We always are talking about this breaking news, and a lot of it's an easy place to get news broken for you if you're if you, especially if you're like not on Twitter anymore. Um, but the the kind of like summary right of what was shared in that post that gives some of the additional information was that it was um and I'm, I'm reading from the gaming leaks and rumors post from someone who translated that post so again we're going through the grapevine here so you know take take it for what you will uh this brand new info from a chinese forum poster who didn't have an insider track record uh therefore following is strictly for fun and giggles switch to production has started somewhere in china um and they're working on that 1,000 units per day, and um, that's the the worker specifically was working on 1,000 units per day, not the whole line. And okay, now that's a lot of a lot of switch consoles. A lot of production, a single person. Yeah. A lot of production. Yeah. Um, they're saying that it's slightly larger than the Switch One with a smaller bezel, uh, black and white Joy Cons, and a slightly larger logo with a two like prominently oh, featured. Oh, so it's called Switch 2. That's what they say. They claim that it, it is called Switch 2. And um or is it Switch squared? That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be really funny actually to do it that way. Um and then there's also a claim that the Joy-Con can still slot in. That original Joy-Con are still connectable. Um I don't know if I, I don't believe see that. How? Unless there's some kind of adapter because if you look at the images that leaked they don't have rails, and they're sort of like they slot into the sides of it. I mean, maybe they could still connect, but also if the device is larger, which we know it is from the the, the CAD drawings, 
it's physically larger in size. I don't see how the Joy-Cons connect to that without looking goofy. It seems odd to me that that would work, but I, I, I who knows? Because it could be one of those things like, because I, I, there was, let's, let's start talking about the, the hardware, you know, because I think the Joy-Con is probably the thing that, that looks the most different, you know? I think in the meantime, um, Let's just quickly go through the stuff that we've seen about the actual physical, like the the case itself, the the shell itself, because those are pretty similar. So from what we can see, right, it looks very similar in design to the OLED switch. Um, in but it's more rounded off. It kind of looks a bit switch lighty. Yeah, at the same it, time. it does have a slightly rounder edge to it. It looks like um, it's like thinner, but like that there's a, a harder edge. You know, like maybe like something like you'd see on a cell phone rather than the Nintendo Switch had that kind of like rounded edge that was like very smooth. And it does look like it's a little more like the Vita or something like that, you know, where it's got kind of a, a harder point on the edge. Um, larger 8-inch screen, magnetic Joy-Cons like we said, uh, USB-C ports on both the top and the bottom, which is a nice a nice change. And then, according to um, some of the additional like images, right, that we're breaking down some of the the specs, um, we're seeing that it would allegedly include 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is compared to the four that were in the original Switch. Uh, it would have support for HDMI 2.1, and it would have 256 gigabytes of internal storage, which is again a, a very large upgrade compared to the uh, 32 that came on the the base Switch. So those all match an alleged leak that we had from earlier in the year with like a shipping document that was breaking all that stuff down. So then now talking about I mean, the let's touch on some of those specs here because okay. I, yeah. I think some of them are interesting. Twelve gigs of RAM is noticeably less than the Steam Deck, and I and I wonder uh, real if, quick for for those who don't know how many are in the Steam Deck. Sixteen gigabytes, so right. it's it's noticeably less. The HDMI 2.1 support is interesting. I wonder if we're going to finally get variable refresh rate or HDR support there. That would be nice to see. We know that that screen on the OLED model, because it's the same screen as the the Switch uh, or the Steam Deck OLED model, supports HDR. It would be great to see an HDR pipeline in the Switch too, and have some of that like gorgeous punching whites and the deep blacks. That would be nice. But you got to imagine HDR supports the reason for that so. right yeah i really hope so 256 gigs of storage is nice to see i've always thought it's strange they didn't have multiple SKUs for storage in the same way that the, the other devices do because the the chip is kind of modular it comes straight off internally you can just swap out the ssd in there and i have always thought it was surprising that they didn't have more if they're targeting 4k now or even 1080p they're, they're going to need higher res assets and so you're going to need more storage, which is what surprised me a little bit about the, the smaller amount of RAM. If they're targeting 4K, loading 4K assets into 12 gigabytes might be a bit of a stretch. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because it, it, does, it does beg that question of like, I guess, are we even dealing with true 4K assets though? Right or or are we probably not if we've got DLSS. We're right, probably... right. We're probably dealing with 1080p images that are being upscaled to 4K, it, which is yeah. obviously a lot a lot less work to do. <clears throat> and then there's that rumor, right, that like that's going to be something that's handled by the dock. That when you're playing natively, it's 1080, but then when you plug into a dock, it could have upscaling to 4K. That was something that was also mentioned um, in some of these leaks and and rumors. So, you know. Um, depending on how much of those rumors hold water and end up bearing fruit, I think this could make sense based on that. But if it is supposed to be dealing with like native 4K assets, then that does seem a little bit suspect. Mm -hmm. um, also, 256 gigabytes is not a lot of storage. It's quite a bit more than what we had. But again, if you're dealing with games with like bigger assets and everything than well we know call of duty is coming if if that comes to to the switch that's going to chomp through that uh, yeah, we know that you, the, even the, chomps through the 512 gigabyte on the uh on the series s mm -hmm. right yeah which is i don't mean and you know who knows maybe there's maybe there's um that'll be a mobile variant or something right yeah imagine. like maybe there's work going to be done there to compress it because when you think about like how how small of a of a of a size the game of like tears of the kingdom is and like how much content is there like obviously nintendo is very good at optimizing um 
size of software and and i think there's an argument to be made um that the size of something like call of duty is intentional right like there, there was kind of uh there, there's a conversation going on about that right now right that like mm-hmm. they they aren't um doing the work that they could be doing to optimize and make the game smaller because they want to dissuade you from uninstalling it ever because they you know if you want to jump in and jump out then you want to keep the game installed and the way for them to do that is to be like well it's so large that if you download it again it's gonna you know if you're somewhere with unlimited internet and high speeds it'll take a while the ghost of bobby kotick passed it's uh, (laughs) right he's there to just just annoy us in perpetuity yeah well and it reminds me of like you know like places like where you live right where there are there are throttles and limits of certain things and it's like i remember yeah. you having situations like oh i'm gonna go i'm gonna download this game when i go visit my parents hey, so, I, I got gigabit now i'm happy i'm a happy man yeah so i'm all good but still you know it's like it's it's not uncommon right so it's like it, it's, yeah i mean i used to get i used to be on 4g it was like um, i'd have to i'm using cellular internet to download these games I remember I had to leave Baldur's Gate 3 on to download overnight. It yeah. was ridiculous. It was mental. So that's, that's one of those things where it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to be interested to see what that looks like, right, with Call of Duty on this device. And, like, are we going to see major differences because Nintendo is just not willing to allow something like that, you know, and that, like, we don't – they don't want <laughs> – you know, fifty uh, percent or more of of the the device's storage should be taken up by Call of Duty, right? I mean, you've still got we we know we've still got the SD card slot on there. We know we've still got the game card slot on there. So presumably, those games could come partially on a game card. It could come on an SD card. You know, those are those options are still there for you. Pop Don't the Switch SD cards card max out at sixty four gigs though? The current ones do. Presumably, the new ones won't, and they will have true because they're going to have to be larger if these games are larger and they've got higher resolution assets unless they continue doing the part of the games on the on the card and you've got to download the rest bullshit that they've done before yeah which obviously nobody likes that so we'll see it's an interesting question for sure one that i'm sure we'll have a better read on as we get closer to the device's release uh so let's talk about the joy cons because i think that's the big the big change right obviously we we have had that rumor for a few months now about there being this like magnetic uh system inside it that's like that's how it connects rather than sliding on and off because obviously there was a lot of problems with that let alone you know joy con drift and everything like many people broke joy cons by you know putting them on wrong or like having the you know I, i had a friend where like the actual like thing on the side of the switch came loose and oh yeah mine's gone wobbly but you know it's to be expected i've had it since 2017 at this point so yeah and you like, travel with it and stuff like that yeah, yeah like it happens but you can see how this would be you know um less wear and tear right because from the look of it there is this like button on the back right that looks like it's and initially we had a conversation in our discord where um Sierra and uh, and Wakahula were both like, "What's up with this button? Like, how could you even <laughs> press that button? Right? Like, it's in the same place as the current one." Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. But but again, I think to your point, like when you look at it, it looks like a button. It looks like a controller yeah, button. Does, yeah. You were the one who came in and was like, "Oh, I bet you that's to release the magnet, right? Like, it's probably yeah. a button you press uh, to like have it disconnect and and like click out right so rather than you having to put it on and slide it onto this thing on the side there's like an insert basically in the side of the unit where you can kind of just press them in to click and then presumably press that button for them to release yeah that would be my guess on it i don't i don't see that they're putting any kind of back buttons on there if they were i think they'd been be further down but then that ruins the ergonomics of using these as solo controllers which would be uh, a shame I think that's that's just the button for the release, but it's quite chunky compared to the current one. So maybe ergonomically it's easier to get these Joy-Cons on and off, or maybe they have problems with smaller buttons. Maybe that's an actual electronic button where it's telling the Switch, oh, you need to eject this controller now, rather than it being a, just a mechanical button like we've got currently that releases a latch. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um... I I don't know like that that as as a piece of technology is odd to me because obviously there's kind of like I guess it's old wisdom now right old conventional wisdom that like magnets and electronics don't like 
play. Yeah, Super that's Ru- old school. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's got magnets in these days. My phone's got magnets in. I can put my pop socket on it. Right. All day, all exactly. Around. But like, I can't help but wonder. I'm like, is that is that gonna be okay? Like, is there gonna is that definitely gonna be a better system? It's is there not some way that like because if it's like you said, where it's an electric button, so it's like that makes that it, was the rumor, that would make it, it was... very easy for that to be something that like fails, right? Because it's like yeah. oh, okay, so the electric button doesn't work, so I literally can't take this off now. It's like what is that? That was the rumor that it was an electromagnet and it was either charged or not charged and it would then allow you to eject the, the Joy-Con. Right. Which would be nice. It means they wouldn't come off in your bag. It would feel more yeah. solid. It would feel more stable. But it would that, feel more like one unit. That does like beg the question of like, because again, right? Like, I, I, I it, it's, um, I, I bring up that old way of thinking to be like, might this not be a new problem? Right. Because it's like, sure, like, magnets are safe now with electronics but it's also like it it reminds me of those stories about like um people with like the wi-fi powered like dishwashers or or, like washing machines and then there's like a firmware update and then it's like oh, i can't turn my washing machine on yeah i do really want a a wi-fi washing machine where it tells me that it's finished i just got one it's pretty sick i'm not gonna lie to you yeah see see but (laughs) i'm counting the days before it's gonna be like yeah i don't know bro samsung yeah right there was an update now we just you can't open the door it's locked sorry it's digitally locked (laughs) fuck you know what i mean it's like like the joy con drift was such a famous problem that it's like i'm really gonna trust that that, like this electric button is never gonna malfunction it's like i don't know guys i don't know and like i'm not i'm not trying to sit here and like fear monger i'm just just having the conversation right of like that does seem a little bit like maybe overcomplicated but i do do like it in theory. I could see why being able to just like press a button and have it like, you know, maybe fold in and just come out rather than it having to be this thing where you're like, you know, carefully taking it on or off of a, of a, a, a it was a good fidget toy though. Oh yeah. But I'm sure that that's probably part of why yours is broken, right? It's yeah. like you're fit fiddling. Hey, with I've it. got through so many joy cons like drifting, broken clips, feels wobbly. There's like so many problems with them. They're not the most reliable of devices, but um, I, I know some of it's probably my fault. But there's a there's a load of other changes with these Joy Cons aside from like aesthetically, they look slightly different, as we said, more rounded off. They've got larger SL and and SR buttons on the side, so those are the ones when you've got it detached from the device. It's got a weird, goofy looking like mo- '90s mobile phone port that seemingly connects to the device. Like that's uh, presumably how it makes the contact. One thing I noticed was that there's a, a fucking screenshot button on the right-hand Joy-Con. I always give that Joy-Con to other people I play with because otherwise that Joy-Con with the screenshot button gets hammered when someone's playing Mario Kart and they don't know what that button means. I'm going to end up with screenshots filling up my photo library like crazy now. I See, I thought you were going to say uh, no more IR sensor no what no more ir sensor either, that was yeah. the, that was the big thing that i noticed is like oh i guess we're giving up on that fair yeah, enough which to be honest it had one good application i know the last time i said this people were just like what about labo labo was great i made the fucking piano i played with it once and then it went in the recycling so for me the only good application was ring fit and the the kind of health check but i compared that with my apple watch and it was not very it's not accurate at all yeah it's like it's a good idea but it doesn't work and like i don't know about you but i sweat a lot when i work out and like there would be times where it's like oh i can't read the you can't read your heart rate because you're sweating too much it's like all right well it's yeah, a it fitness like game. Yeah. And then at this point, like, I'm my heart rate My heart rate down. is down, right? Because I've been yeah. sitting here trying to scan my thumb for five minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Allegra's like, you didn't do very well. And I'm like, fuck you, Allegra. My legs are aching like crazy. So you have no idea how many squats I did. Leave me alone. Oh, my God. No, it wasn't those. What were the ones that we both hated? Was it like... It was the squats. Was like, it was was the... like, no, it wasn't. You had to sit down on the floor and do like some kind of was it the mountain climb oh my god that was rough too that thing that was rough as hell for me <sighs> yeah well it's almost february coming up mm, i might yeah might, might be on board if they do ring fit too for the might, switch might have to bring it back we might have to bring it back uh so th- those are are, are are kind of the big headlines here there's a few other uh bits i wanted to discuss 
Um, but you know, before we do that, let me remind you that this episode of Nintendo Noise is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of September. They are, of course, Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Stoby, Steve Stompy, Susan Likes Cats and Also Boobies, Tad the Dude, Voodoo Vic, and Wakahula. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash games. You all the realest of the real, and we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows. Remember, if you want to check out those shows, the Flip Screen Games podcast, or the Steam Deck podcast where you can check out our thoughts on what's going on in the world of home consoles and PC gaming or other handhelds that are on that handheld PC wave. You can go check those out. If you enjoy this show, they're a great time. And I think you'll have fun with them too. So. Oh, uh, right. I like, said this on Flip Screen. I'm a little off my rhythm on that. I think I said all the no, things. You were good. You Flipscreen.games. That's the site. Go yeah. over there. Show your support. Thank you so much. We're back. Um, so... Here was one of the things I wanted to run by you uh, because we also had a, a detailed uh, config list. Uh, yes. I, this was another one of the things that was like in that initial Reddit thread. Uh, Wario64 did a whole breakdown of it. I wanted to just throw to you real quick and see was there anything here that stuck, uh, stuck out to you? The microphone. There's a microphone in there. Built-in microphone, CMB-Mic-X7. And this, again, was one of the rumors that there's going to be a new input method on the Switch 2. And then I think it came out that there was going to be a built-in microphone. Looks like that is actually the case, which I'm very happy to see. You need it for the, you know. Yeah. You need it for the uh, the Mario uh, Party ports, right? I'd love that. I'd love to be like Ben Orange. And like fool everyone like I used to <laughs> when I was playing Mario Kart 6. Uh, looks like the RAM's getting a boost up to DDR5, uh, DDR5X, I think. Um, the previous 7, was what, 3? I think it was DDR4, I may be wrong okay. though. I didn't even think DDR4 was out in, when this, in 2017, so that's, that's on uh, me. Yeah, it's LDDR4. Um, in there so we got uh, ddr5 which would be faster you probably need it if you're running higher resolution assets dual cooling fans i think there's only one fan currently in the switch right so we've got potentially two of them which is good cool that and makes sense what, like, too right like uh, higher uh uh what's the word i'm looking for the the heat sink i'm sure is is a lot higher on this, right? With like, or the requ- the need for for cooling yeah, is much higher with there guess. being yeah. higher, uh, you know, powered parts. I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm grinding to a halt trying to get this thought out. I apologize. Uh, then the, I guess this is what we found out that it was HDMI 2.1. It's got the video signal right. conversion chip, display port HDMI, which is good. Um, gigabit Ethernet. I think that's a. I think did we have gigabit Ethernet? It may have been only. I'm not sure still nice to have not that you know most people will be using it uh, and you said does this mean anything to you i think the video game console protective case is the housing for the switch because if you look at the size 206 by 115 by 14 millimeters seems to be about the same dimensions as the the switch um so just to be expected about 20 centimeters long so i wanted to bring that up to you because i thought that was interesting one of the photos in that kind of initial set of gallery of photos, right? That's like in Andy's article. He got shared around social and everything. There's one of the shots is of two screens. It's like two different versions of... of, of... Well, I think one's the original base switch. Because if you so, look on, on so, his X account, there's like two photos, right? Yeah, and it's like a side-by-side. Side. That was going to be my question, though, right? It's like if that's the original switch, then like it looks like it's quite a bit bigger. Yeah, it is quite a bit bigger, which is, I think, a good thing. I think it's a similar, going to be a similar in size width to something like a steam deck now i saw somebody on x i wasn't able to i didn't have a chance to i can't believe i just called it x twitter uh i i didn't have a chance to corroborate this but they they had said that um these specs seem to look like it'll actually maybe even be a little bit bigger than the steam deck thinner obviously lighter but it's quite possible once you've put the joy cons on there um yeah so yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see on that. One thing I think was of note in the um the main the photo of the main board is the battery compartment. It's very small. Presumably they're not going to be running this chip at, at 
pretty high power, so they're going to be running it very efficiently, um, which means you might need to keep your kind of performance in check. Like, I don't think it's going to be necessarily the, the power horse that people are expecting. It, that's not to say it couldn't be when it's docked, which is, I think, what you've spoken about before, where it's like, well, when it's docked, then maybe the dock does something else. It gives it that little boost with the with maybe like an external GPU or like some kind of up res in the dock. Yeah, there's um the Chinese peripheral ma maker uh, MOBA pad was the the entity that had previously claimed that the Switch 2 was going to have 1080p native resolution and that the dock would, would support 4K. So that could be the case. Yeah, or it could just be that it's the same with the current Switch where there are two modes, a handheld mode and a docked mode, and it just right. kind of switches between them and is able to draw more power once it's kind of plugged in. Which would make sense, right? Like that's that that's something that could easily work. I think even without an eGPU, right? Because I mean, you think about like the original um, version of the 360 did something similar to that, right? Where like it, it was native 720 and it would upscale to 1080. Yes, that's that's right. Like uh, most of the time, you never get anywhere close to 1080. Um, but I, th I feel like we probably will with Nvidia's tech on this. I'm really excited about it. Like it's it's good to see some actual specs come out and leak. I'm really excited to what they potentially do with the microphone. I, th I feel like they've done cool stuff with that before, both on the GameCube and on the DS and the Wii U. They did some really cool stuff with the microphone. It'd be cool to have that back so that we can they can experiment and explore new ways of of um, gaming. Maybe it also means they're they're modernizing their online system so we can have voice chat on the switch and we can you do that microphone back, back that would be nice party chat. That like would be really cool similar to, to what's the the situation with the steam deck right where there's like that small microphone that you can use for party chat is really nice yeah and you just like you just chat in that and then maybe you just jump on a game together or maybe you're all playing different games but you just yapping back and forth with your friends I, I feel like that's what's sorely lacking currently on on the switch the microphone solution that they came up with where it was like you get this little box and you plug one side into your phone and you plug one side into the worst your, the your worst switch idea and you ever open up the switch app and that's like how you do it everyone was like fuck that i'll just use discord so i i don't think that was a great solution i feel like they need they needed to work on that which is good to see good to see nfc reader models still here as well on the list means that amiibo is still going to work they, those yeah. aren't done and dusted yeah it's been very interesting like what's going on with amiibo right now because there's been a couple games that like you'd think would have had amiibo and didn't and then like splatoon had another set and it's just like are amiibo dead or not like what's going on here but i guess not or at least they want to still have support. Well, they, yeah, they might have support for it. They might not make any print anymore. Who knows? Like it might just be like, oh, that was a cool thing while it lasted, and we're gonna gonna get rid of the toys for life thing now. Mistake. Keep making them. Don't do this to me. <laughs> you can have mine if you want, Pete. It's yeah, no you, you, there's a couple that you're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, send them over. I need that. I need that. Uh, that loot goblin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god, he was a nightmare. I need that. You okay. can't sell that thing, even like even if I didn't. Nah, the, the loot goblin is probably one I'm going to keep. It's got to stay I'll, in the family at least, you know. Yeah, other ones will uh, will stick around. Uh, so just one thing I did want to just call out um, before we wind down here is that you mentioned the the smaller capacity of the battery chamber, right, and how that that could influence um, performance. You know, and that there's been all this conversation about like, oh, is the Switch 2 going to be this secret powerhouse? Is it going to be taking advantage of this upscaling technology? And is that going to make it on par with other modern consoles? And will we see third party games on it and all this stuff? And, I, you know, I, I there's been quite a bit of skepticism uh, from certain folks and, you know, um, us included to a degree, right? We've talked about that technology and how it, it obviously, like, what we've seen with DS DLSSR on uh, Steam Deck has been really impressive. So the idea that Nintendo could leverage that meaningfully is definitely... Um, it's not magic, though. You know, it, it can right. go so far, but it's not magic. The, the chip still needs power. It's the same deal with the Steam Deck to the Steam Deck OLED. We were able to get a little bit more performance out of the Steam Deck OLED because they reduced the size of the chip. We got a slightly larger battery. That meant it could last longer, or we could kind of bump up the power and, and do what we needed to there. 
it's the reason the ROG ally run doesn't run in boost mode all the time because you get like 30 minutes out of the thing otherwise you know <laughs> We know that we know the laws of physics and that that small of a battery um, chamber means that this isn't going to be running kind of guns blazing with the fans whirring like crazy. Right. But I don't think that matters if the screen is is 1080p or even if it's 720p. I know the, the, set, the, the leaks were that it was a 1080p screen. I think it may not be a 1080p screen. I could see them going with like a 720p screen and just sticking with that because I do think that's kind of the sweet spot for these handhelds um i i don't see there being real much of a problem getting dlss to get games looking like tasty on that 720p display but the rumors before have been that they're targeting making it look like a ps4 game and right. that's really all i could ask for i'd be very happy with that if i can play something Me that too. looks like say horizon zero dawn on this device and it runs performantly i'd be very very happy with that yeah i mean think about how good like late gen ps4 games looked yeah, you know, like stuff like yeah, Ghost of exactly. Tsushima, Last of Us Part Two, like they looked great. You know, like I think that would be totally fine. Um, the thing I I just wanted to call out here, I guess, just to kind of like establish expectations for that sort of thing. If you're one of those people that is is like really a believer in this upscaling technology and and is thinking here that the Switch Two is going to be this big powerhouse, um, there was a tweet from Digital Foundry that I wanted to share that I think just to you know, not set ourselves up for disappointment on this kind of stuff, right? Um, they they were sharing the photo that I talked about where there's, like, the actual shot of the motherboard, right? And, like, the, the shells of the Joy-Con. And this is what they had to say. This is the most interesting slash plausible Switch 2 leak image. Looks like some rough prototype components. Why fake a main board? Pay attention to the small size of the battery chamber and keep expectations firmly in check on handheld performance. So, yeah, great yeah, assault, right? They make sense. I think, you know, if we get 720p 30 frames per second or 720p 40 frames per second, depending on what that screen can do, I think that that's fine. I mean, this could be fake. It, it could not be real. This Or these could be old. They may have expanded the size of the battery compartment. We don't know. It, it all remains to be seen. But this is, I think, the best glimpse we've had at what the Switch 2 is potentially going to be. It lines up with the rumors. I think the Joy-Cons look more ergonomic. I think they look cool. I like the the, new, the rail system going away. All of these things we already knew about, but it's it's cool to see it in pictures. It's always like I'm always on a, a double-edged sword with this kind of thing because it's like I love seeing these leaks. I think it's cool. But then it, I think it would have been so cool to see this as like a reveal, and I feel like the reveal needs to happen probably soon at this point it really feels like it's amping up to it people have been going for meetings at nintendo and talking about it people it's have, weird like, to me that they about this device. it's weird to me how much they're talking to people about it behind the scenes and that they haven't just revealed it yet because every day that you do that you risk this moment right and you risk the 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 you know uh, excuse the turn of phrase but you risk blowing your load and having it be like IGN getting the clicks instead of your reveal video or whatever. Not that people are not going to watch the reveal video, right? Like ultimately, I think these kind of leaks probably just increase hype and conversation. And that's why you don't comment about them. But yeah, it's like you think that you want to just own this moment, right? If you had revealed this. You know what? They could really own the moment now as well. Announce this. It's four ninety nine. It's, you know, $200 cheaper than the ps5 pro and you can play your favorite games everywhere you go oh and oh look now it's got call of duty now it's got this now it's got that all of the best games that you know and love i still think you, here. i still think you come out of 400 and then you say it's 300 dollars cheaper but, you know. <laughs> i don't think it's ever gonna be 400 it's just a 499 device i feel like i feel like you just do it man you know like they're sitting on all this money right now like it's like even if even if they are doing the like well you know we take we take Fifty dollars on the chin, and then you buy a game, and that's where we get our profit. It's like people are going to buy it anyway. Yeah, that's but think about how many more people will buy it if it's aggressively priced. I do think that was a big part of the Switch's early success. It's like it's three hundred dollars. Yeah, three hundred dollars. Nine countries. Like wow. Less yeah, than it's like this is less than the 3DS was when it came out. Right? It's like, what are you kidding me? 
It's like, yeah, of course I'll buy it. It's got Breath of the Wild on it. You know, it's like, I think you want to replicate that. I think you want to come out at it. It's such an aggressive price point, price point that people are like, what the fuck? And then think, have a hot game on it. Yeah, you, know, you know, speaking of Breath of the Wild, did you see the the leak that, that potentially is a remaster of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah. I'm waiting for another Zelda game to come out and be announced and like it comes out at the same same month. They they they're like, gonna they never get the chance. They're gonna announce a uh, a remaster <laughs> of uh of, of Breath of the Wild that comes out like the, like three days earlier or something. Or like uh or it'll be like, Oh, we're remaking Ocarina of Time. It's like cool, great. Like thanks. I swear to God, yeah, you're probably right. Or or they're gonna announce Lego Legend of Zelda, right? It's like it's fucking always stealing Horizon's Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing Horizon's thunder jaw. That's a pun. Thank you, everybody. I'll be here all week. Tip your waitress. I'm friends with her dad. Um, just kidding. You don't have. I don't have to be friends with you. Just tip your tip your tip your servers, everybody. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, uh, I don't have any more PSAs for you. I don't have any closing thoughts on this one, aside from we're getting closer every day, and I feel like. I am putting a decent amount of stock in this because I feel like the closer we get, the closer, the more and more it feels like it simply must be happening, right? That it's like so many people have this information now that it's like, why wouldn't this be true, right? Why why wouldn't there be legitimate leaks starting to come out seemingly, what, six, eight months away from this device coming out and we've still not heard anything official about it yeah it's, we always get this you know we always yeah. get it with, with any device think about how much we knew about the the nx before we met the switch right a lot yeah yeah i mean they wouldn't shut the fuck up about that device though because the wii u was a disaster and they wanted to <laughs> but, oh but there is something it's new. coming nx is coming and it's like all right cool <laughs> yeah this is like the opposite they're like no don't you want that oled switch mario kart bundle that we put out go buy that <laughs> all right <laughs> We still want your money. <laughs> oh god, I I feel like I have to tell everyone because Henry was really wanting a switch, and I'm just like, no, you can just use mine. You just you gotta wait. It. You really just have to wait. Like if it's 2024 and you don't have a switch yet, and you're like, oh, I think I really want one, unless you are willing to just throw three hundred dollars away, please wait like six more months, and you will have a switch too that can play all of your old games as well. Yeah. Or right, like wait for the price cut because it's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta come. Like yeah, if you're gonna be a will. late adopter, that's great. But yeah, wait for that price cut. All right. Well, let us know what you think, folks. Uh, do you believe these rumors? If so, did you hear what you wanted to hear? Right. Like, what is is this what you're hoping for in a Switch Two? Uh, did you want? more gimmicks more variants more creativity or are you happy that this appears to be a bigger badder nintendo switch right i think we you and i have both expressed that that's what we want time and time again so i don't know that i don't know that we need to put too fine of a point on it but if this is all right sounds good to me yeah same like i think it's it's really exciting to see looks like it's going in the right direction I think I'm just now ready for an announcement and to see what they're doing on the software side because I think the software is something that very rarely leaks and I'm, I'm interested to see what they're doing there. Especially with, I mean, that's, I think that's the most exciting part of any video game console launch, but especially with Nintendo, it's like we're here for the software. We're really not here for the hardware, right? Yeah. So let us know what you think, everybody. I'm very interested because I know I know a lot of you were talking about these leaks in the Discord, so I think a lot of us are... are in agreement here that this is the real deal but if any of you are like absolutely not you're all drinking the kool-aid i want to hear that take too so make sure you write into us all the ways that you can head over to flipscreen.games that's our website where you'll find all the places we are all over this great beautiful disgusting internet however you choose to get involved we're over there having fun making content about video games for you go check it out uh, speaking of which, we put up a short this week where we did a review of the plucky squire so if you were interested in plucky squire like i know many of you were Go check it out. 59 second reviews on uh, shorts, TikTok, all that stuff. Uh, we worked hard on it, and it's a fun game. So go uh, go check that out. All right, folks. We love you. Be good. Be well. Take care of each other. Uh, Flipscreen.games. I've been Pete. He's been Steve. We'll see you next week. We love you.
Did I say that enough? We love you. Goodbye. I'm proud of you. <laughs>